Right, I'm going to start covering this uh, rudder surface that's been prepped. Now on here it's had two coats of Mod Podge um, that soaks in and it's thoroughly dry. In fact I did it a couple of days ago. I've got the 100% polyester and I've got the iron set fairly high. It's three quarters of the way around on the dial. So, tack it at one end You can see it's taken straight away there and then at the other end just as you would with solar film and in the middle and that allows me to pull this over now and start to put it on as you would any other iron on covering. In fact it should be lighter in the commercial covering because the only adhesive is where it's actually being stuck down. It's not on the whole surface of the material. So you carry on round, tacking it down. Don't worry about the little creases because they'll come out with the heat gun. You can see there it's taking I can pull it across now. I can exert a little bit of force to it. It's taking along there. It helps if you have asbestos fingers. But there you go. And all that's happening now is the Mod Podge is being reactivated by the heat of the iron. Once the heat's taken off, it sets again. So there you go, all the way around. Now the next stage, which I'll show you, I'll pause the video and I'll show you once this is ironed on, the next stage involves going around all the, the contact points with non-shrinking dope. And I find that really secures the joint. So there you go. I'll pause this for now and then I'll tidy this up and show you the next stage. Okay, so that's um, been tidied up. And what I've actually done is along the edge, I've put some non-shrinking dope all the way around to seal the edge. Now Cliff Harvey had asked me whether um, this polyester would stick to itself because he had a bit of a nightmare trying to do it with ripstop nylon. Well in fact it does um, and I found using this technique on an experimental piece that it works quite well. So here we go, the next layer. So line it up and the rule of thumb is you generally do the long, longest side first. I've got plenty of surplus there and the iron remains hot so Tack one end, that's tacked, pull a little bit of tension on it, tack the other end and into the centre and that will allow me to actually pull this, it doesn't have to be drum tight but just take some of the slack out of it. So I'm going along this edge now. And this is the edge that I've actually put the dope onto. So we'll see how it takes. See there it's taken straight away. So in the same way that the Mod Podge is reactivated with the heat, the dope seems to work in a similar manner. So I'm just applying a little bit of heat to pull it to tension. And then I'll tidy it all up. And I'm using the weight of the actual control surface itself to put a little bit of tension on, holding onto the cloth while I let the weight of the part being covered to pull on it. 
We'll let you go through the onto the fingers there. I felt the heat there. It's an occupational hazard. So it's nearly tacked all the way around. I'll tack it on this surface, and I have found that with the application of the heat, it will actually stretch around in a very similar manner to um, solar text which I've used. So I'm assuming that it's it's very much the same sort of material. There might be slight chemical difference in it. But you can see there it's taken all the way around and that's going over the top of the previous material quite well. So I'll tidy this up and I'll seal it and then the next part of the video I'll show it being shrunk with the heat gun ready for the first application of dope. Okay, so that's now covered. I've sealed around the edges with um, non-shrinking dope. I've also found that you don't need to worry too much about these little bits of fibres that stick up. Uh, when it's had a couple of coats, you can actually sand them off and then they're not visible at all. But you can see some wrinkles here because this hasn't been shrunk yet and it's not taut. So I'm going to apply the heat, start in the middle and keep it moving. And the wrinkles come out. Little one there. There you go. And then I've just got the other side to do. Okay, so this next stage I'm using 50 50 thin down shrinking dope for the first coat. Um, you need to apply it with a broad brush. It could do with being a little bit bigger than this actually. Squeeze out most of the the dope you don't need much you don't want it dripping through the fabric and then steady away apply and keep it moving squeezing out as you go Last little bit. That's evenly finished. Now the subsequent coats will be done with non-shrinking dope. You only need the shrinking for the first layer. So there you have it. The vertical stabiliser and the rudder covered. Um, it's complete other than subsequent coats of non-shrinking dope to seal the surface. But it's a very, very fine weave and I don't think it'll take an awful lot of filling. I find that the shrinking thin down layer of dope seems to give the desired result that I'm after. I'm very pleased with that and it's a very, very economical covering material. £2.50, about $3.50. 250 English money um, for a metre by five foot so it's not expensive um, and it'll be a great blank canvas to add colour later on perhaps using rattle cans coats of paint from car body shop I don't know yet so thanks for watching I hope you get to go flying this weekend and if you don't get modelling